um, just introduction. I'm I'm Mark. I'm originally from Hong Kong. I was born and raised here. I went to KG Five um, in Homantin, and then after I graduated through the IB program, I actually spent two years in Toronto before going to UCC. So in UCC, uh, the the really main things I the main reason why I chose UCC was really because of the early patient exposure. You know, um, it's it's very rare to have a have a medical school that emphasizes on that really early on. I remember the first and second year, I was already speaking to patients. I wasn't, I was going to the hospitals um, to see patients with doctors. Um, I will obviously wasn't seeing patients by myself, but definitely with supervision. And also I was actually in the, in the second year, I went to um, patients uh, house and patients families and met their families and try to understood the, the biopsychological, bio cycle and social aspect of the patient's disease. So that's what a lot of um, medical stu- medical schools emphasize on nowadays. It's not only a li- thinking about the uh, the patient has a disease, how we're going to treat them, how we're going to manage them, but it's also about how is disease affecting the patient's men- mental status, how are they affecting the family members. That's also very important, and that's what really em- is emphasized in UCC. So I got to do that, um, and then and then. UCC is also one of the one of the medical schools that allows students to take some time away from their normal semester and go go abroad. So I remember in the fourth year, in the first semester, that's six months. That's about about actually sorry, three to four months. I was actually spending time in Singapore and then spending time in Hong Kong. So I did an, a surgical elective, plastic surgery elective in Singapore for a month. And then I came back to Hong Kong to do a general surgery elective in, in HKU. Uh, and then I spent another summer in Hong Kong, um, CUHK, the, the emergency department as well. So it's really the only medical school in Ireland that gives you the opportunity to stay in Hong Kong, to go somewhere else, uh, you say the US, Canada, wh- whatever, during the semester period. Because most students say from UCD, from Trinity, they only have the opportunity to do that during the summer, the, the summertime. And so UCC is quite unique in that perspective. Another thing that I really want to highlight is that UCC is also the only medical school in Ireland that kind of makes, uh, makes, your, makes the final years do a final year project on, on research. So um, other, other schools in, the U, in, in Ireland do it as a voluntary basis, but we actually do it in order to graduate. So I did a paper on obstetrics uh, on um, on OBGYN, and then I did another paper on um, uh, on medical education as well. So that really amps up your CV, and it, it just looks much better compared to someone who actually didn't do anything. Um, yeah, so that was the main thing. And one more thing I really want to highlight is the simulation center. So I felt that the simulation center is where I learned the most. I was, I remember in the fourth year, I was literally put in with uh, one of my colleagues into this room. There was a, there was a mannequin that breathed, that talked, that coughed, everything. And you would have to kind of ask the mannequin questions like a normal person. And obviously the mannequin is controlled by someone in the, in the, um, uh, in the control room. And, and suddenly he will deteriorate and suddenly he will, he'll lose his pulse. He'll, he'll stop breathing and you have to react. And, and your colleagues will be on the other side of the wall, uh, on the other side of the window, looking at you and, and observing you and how you react. That is really what makes a, a like, that what makes a difference between the theory, the knowledge that you get from textbook and actually applying it to clinical practice. And that's what a lot of students struggle with. And, I think UCC really knows this and emphasizes on the simulation-based uh, education as well. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is Cork itself. Um, Cork is really an amazing city. Um, compared to Hong Kong, it's very small. Uh, so don't be alarmed when you get there. Like I would say it's kind of like say you had you had Shatin and Tai Wai all into one, and that's kind of like Cork itself. And that's the city itself. That's kind of like how I picture it in my mind, but it's probably bigger than that. Every because it's 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 kind of condensed. Uh, you can walk everywhere. You can bike. You don't really need to take a taxi or anything like that. Um, and 
Interestingly, they have very good Chinese food, I have to say. Uh, there's this Chinese restaurant called Yuan Ming Yuan. They actually have really good dim sum. I, I was actually very amazed. So that's actually a very, very good thing. I, I, I was scared because I didn't know what Island was like. I never visited that before. Um, so when I went there, I was actually very surprised to see a lot of Chinese culture there too. A lot of, a lot of um, students from Hong Kong, from mainland China, all sorts of, all parts of Asia all come together and so many restaurants, so many shops and you see our, our culture there. So it's actually very nice. Um, I think internship is one of the main things that everyone questions. So unfortunately at this moment, Hong Kong, uh, in order to work in Hong Kong, you need to take the exam. Okay, either you take the exam or you do this thing called limited registration, whereby you work abroad for a few years, you um, take on what we call intermediate examinations, like membership examinations, and then you come back to Hong Kong and you can work uh, in the hospitals for as a limited reg registered doctor. The traditional route is really to take the exam, um, part one, part two, and part three, which I'll, I'll kind of talk about a little bit more. And then, and then do another year of internship, and then uh, apply as full as a fully registered doctor in Hong Kong, and you can continue your um, your training here. But the problem right now is that the uh, in order to take this exam, you actually need to have a, a one year internship abroad. And in this case, it, in in Ireland's case, it's usually having an internship in Ireland. Okay. And people always question, oh, um, am, I, am I guaranteed an internship? Um, you know, what happens if I don't get one? So yes, you can't, we can't guarantee you an internship. And then I think every, a lot of students struggle with this, with this thing, but it's actually, the, the rate of getting an internship in, in Ireland is actually extremely high. You might not get, as an international student, you might not get your ideal, ideal place. So you might not get the city center for the whole 12 months. Um, but you'll get probably 12, six months in the city center, six months in the periphery hospitals, which is what I did. Um, another thing, I'm, you're not guaranteed to stick to your, your school's location. So I graduated from UCC, but my internship was actually in Galway. Okay. So it was a bit north of UCC. Um, and I did take six months in a peripheral hospital, a one hour drive away from the Galway city. And I did another six months in in, uh, in Galway city itself, okay? And um, so that, that, that's really it. So you, again, you may not get the ones you want, but you will most likely get an internship, okay? Uh, and, and every year there's, we have this, uh, we call the, we have this kind of a doctor's union and that they have been always constantly striving to increase more spots uh, for international students. And even last year, they actually increased 120 spots for over for, for in, internships. So, so, and there were some spots actually, and uh, they weren't even filled. So don't worry in that case, I would say my, my, my suggestion is to apply, get in, focus on each year, going through each year, passing each year, getting good grades for each year. And then, and then in terms of internship, it's really based on your final year grades. Okay. That's when, that's when you have to pick it up. You have to, and, and they rank you to get the internship. They rank you um, from first to last in your class. And that's how you get allocated. Okay. And again, unfortunately, EU students will get priority before you. But again, you'll, you'll most likely get a spot. Okay. Um, and just really briefly, how to get back to Hong Kong. So after the internship, so what I did after my internship, I finished in July. I came back uh, to Hong Kong and then I immediately applied for the um, part one, uh, part one and part two of the HKML League, which is the license, local licensing examination. Part one is the um, professional law knowledge is split into two papers. So it's basically your final year examination paper. It, it tests you on every single specialty that you've done, medicine, surgery, OBGYN, pediatrics. And then it's split into two papers. And then it also might include some, some stuff from preclinical years as well. And then uh, the paper two is English based. That's English kind of medical English, which honestly, in my, in my perspective, coming from Ireland, you will not have a problem. This examination, the part two examination for English has a hundred percent pass rate. So you shouldn't, it's, it, it's not, you don't have to worry about that. I didn't even, I didn't study for that one. 
because you don't really need to. Um, and then the part one, uh, part one, the, the professional knowledge is where everyone struggles with. I think I, I think most of whoever is interested in medicine from, our, from Hong Kong will know that this pass rate, this, the pass rate is extremely low. It's like 40 percent, 20 percent. But I have to emphasize that a lot of these people who take this exam are specialists. OK, they are people who say have few years abroad, who have done specialized training, who have become surgeons, who become pediatricians, everything like something like that. And they come back and they try to do they try to do um, final year, final year content. And that can be very difficult because if think about if a, if a specialist who's done five years of pediatric training, obviously is, is not going to really remember OBGYN, is not going to remember surgical stuff. So for them to take this exam is hard. And that's why the pass rate is actually low. So my, so my thought process was I wanted to, my goal was to come back to Hong Kong to work. So I wanted to get back to Hong Kong as fast as I can. So that's immediately after internship. Everything is still fresh in my, in my mind because I just, I just only um, finished medical school a year, a year or two ago. So I could still take this exam um, pretty well. And unfortunately I did, I passed, I passed part one, part two and for my first goal. And I'm actually trying to go for my part three in November as well, which is the clinical exam. Now, um, so that's really the, the kind of the pathway to come back. And don't worry, there's actually a very good society in Hong Kong they call it the Licentiate uh, Medical Society of Hong Kong, whereby they all it's all compromised of um, overseas doctors who really who wish to come back to Hong Kong and they give support for people who want to pass the exams. So I got I got past papers, I got clinical training. I am now I actually didn't have in-person training by the society for this clinical examination as well. So 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 they have a very big support. They they include doctors from the UK, Ireland, Australia mainland China, India, everywhere. So this is, this is a very good support system. And I think that that's the most important when you tackle these exams. OK. Um, and so that's that's kind of what I have. So whoever is interested in medicine probably knows there's something going on in the news recently about the changing the the the, the changing of laws of how to register overseas doctors in Hong Kong. So. Um, they are about to pass a new law, and I'm 90% sure that this, this, this law will pass in the next few weeks. So they're basically saying that you don't now, you, you currently, in order to take the exam, you need an internship. Now they're saying that once this bill has passed, you do not need an internship to come back and take the exam. And you can do your internship here in Hong Kong. So this is a big advantage. So instead of staying in Ireland to do your internship, you can immediately graduate. From UCC or whatever uh, university, and then come back to Hong Kong, take the exams, take your time, take the year off, do the exams, and then start the intern your, your Hong Kong internship after. So that's an additional support. And then also the other route is that you do your internship abroad, um, finish that in in Ireland, say, come back and then apply as a limit as a as a specialist special registration pathway. You that this is kind of like a bond with the with, with the government. You are bonded by the government. The government kind of owns you for, say, five five ten years after you you finish your your um your specialist training. But but it doesn't honestly to me it doesn't matter because the training you get is through public hospital. That's the only place where you get the most training. So this this pathway is also a very good pathway for you. But it, but we can't obviously say for sure whether we are going to be like. We, I, we can't say for sure that Ireland, all Irish, Irish medical schools are going to be part of the list of 100 medical schools that's recognized. But I would say to the standards that I've been through, it's, it's, it's definitely up there. And I, I really think that they will be part of that 100 list.